Pump up the volume on your parenting with Parent Pump Radio. Tune into something different that makes a difference. At Parent Pump Radio, instead of a ripple, we choose to create a splash. Get energized, get inspired, and get informed with how to parent in the new millennium. With your host and parent coach super guide, Jacqueline T.D. Wynn. Welcome to Parent Pump Radio. Our show is all about family and parenting, and this year we've added family financial freedom as a major topic. We want to help families learn, act, and implement strategies to become financially free with topics ranging from debt elimination, student loans, credit, cash flow, investment, and even money mindset. I'd like to announce that I just came out with my second book, It's co-author with Maurice Kempner and is now published on Amazon. It's called True Legacy Wealth, Creating Generational Wealth Through Real Estate Investing. This book is not just about learning how to buy and sell real estate, but it's also about understanding the purpose of your family and becoming unified. It's about creating and operating a business that incorporates your entire family. And it's about ensuring the knowledge and education and wealth that you acquire in your lifetime are passed from one generation to the next. And you'll get to know more about my real estate investing program for out of state or out of California. It's a turnkey program where we find the property, we analyze it, we rehab it, and we manage it for you so that you can make money while you're sleeping. And as always, if you're looking for a speaker for your organization or event, please contact me at info at integrativeminds.com to schedule a meeting time. All the information about my book, the real estate program, and my email is in the show notes. So on to our show today, our guest is back talking about how you can settle your debts and what happens when you are dealing with settlement agency. He helps consumers clean up and fix their credit profiles to improve their credit score. He's been in the credit restoration business since 1990, for lots of really long time, so he knows what he's talking about. He grew his credit restoration company from two employees to over 550 employees before he sold the company in 2012. He had annual revenues of $65 million. So after selling his credit restoration company, he started a no advance fee debt settlement company. Since the company's inception in 2013, he has helped over 5,000 consumers settle their collection debts for much reduced amount. And here's the great thing about his company, Your Debt Solution, Inc. He never charges upfront fees. They only get paid if and when they can complete your debt settlement process. So you have nothing to lose. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Robert Child. Hi, Robert. Hey, hello, Jacqueline. Good morning. Good morning here. We're both in LA. <laughs> it's a good day today. It is. It's sunny outside. Yeah, yeah. let's get into this because I know a lot of people are in fear of these collection agency calling. And then when they do, you don't know what to do. You're like deers in headlights. When someone receives one of these letters in the mail stating that they must comply in this attempt to collect a debt, what do you do next? Should we call them? It may or may not be a good idea to call them. What I would do is that when you receive uh, a collection letter uh, from a collection agency saying, hey, you owe a bank, you owe a credit card company $5,000, it's been charged off for a long time. And I'll talk about what that word means, charged off, in a second. But Take a look at your recent credit report and may recommend a company for a very accurate credit report for free is annualcreditreport.com. Annualcreditreport.com was founded about 11 years ago, 12 years ago, and it's free per per person once per year. Uh, The information is 95 plus percent accurate on the negative and positive information. So I say take a look at your credit report. If you get this collection letter, and you take a look at that, say it's Bank of America charge off for $5,000. And let's say it says data last activity, known as DLA on your credit report, data last activity, or uh, last update, sometimes it might reflect as. Let's say, for example, it says four and a half years ago. Remember my last show, I said there's a federal statute of limitations of only four years. 
So if they send you that collection letter and it says data last activity or last update 4.5 years ago, they may be breaking FDCPA law, known as the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act law. Now, let's say it's a year old. You look at it, it's one, two years old. Then call them up. If you're, if you're sure it's yours or you're sure it's not yours, facing it now actually is a better thing than down the road, especially if we're going to a lawsuit format. So, but when you do, do call them, it is being recorded for quality assurance. It always is being recorded for quality assurance. And never, ever admit it's your debt. Don't use yourself as a third party when you call them. For example, ha don't say, how much did you say I owe? I said this on the last, last uh, webinar. I said, don't admit. Say things like, how much did you say is owed on this account? Uh, this account doesn't ring a bell to me. You know, had you, you said it, it's five thousand dollars on this account, not my account. Things like that. Be careful. Use it, use yourself as a third party when talking with these clutch agencies. Because if, if it comes to you later and you get sued, especially for a debt of that size or bigger, you know they can use those recordings against you in a court of law. So, what about when they call you? Should you call them back? And then, what do you say if you answer the phone and they're calling the phone with you? Well, first off, they can't be deceptive. They can't call from a, a, a block number, number one, that's against the law. I mean, they may be able to spoof their number. Like if you have an area code 714 or 212, like in New York City, they can trick you thinking that there's a local call coming into your cell phone or, or place a residence on your landline. But again, if you happen to pick it up, do the same thing as if you were calling them, third-party communication. Um, most people know that they use the same number they call every day, every day, or every couple of days. They block it. But tell you the truth, folks, you're better off answering it because you might catch them with their pants down as far as some kind of lie under the Fair Credit Reporting Act or, most importantly, the FDCPA, Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. And we'll talk about that uh, on another podcast. And this is another question that I get from people, too. They, they get paper from a, a process server. Yeah. Saying that Legal they papers. right with paperwork yeah. right and right. Uh, so it indicates that they have to respond within a certain amount of days thirty days right. six days should they respond in those days does that make them uh, saying that they do owe that debt right so usually the, the this is this is the, the the sequence of events especially here in California um, they the, a clutch agency first off on the phone, can't threaten you with a lawsuit unless they have a law firm backing it up right now, or unless it's a clutch agency law firm, they're out there. So if, if a creditor says, or a clutch agency representing the creditor says, we're going to sue you, Jacqueline, in court. Oh, great. Okay, I got a pen and paper. Give me the name of your law firm uh, partner, the, the address, email address, phone number, and contact name. Oh, we don't have one. Well, you better get one because you only have 30 days from today to come up with that information, or I'm going to counter sue you for a violation of FDCPA. So if the collection letters go unanswered, then they go to court and, and it's called the intent to sue. So it means that you'll see the first set of legal papers. And this is in most states, not all states, California included. You'll get legal papers that doesn't have a court date set up, but it will say, yeah, I respond within 30 days. Some states are 15 days, 21 days, things like that. So you have to check with your local uh, um, bar association, really, if you get sued. But California's 30 days. So you get served if it goes beyond 30 days that you didn't that didn't reply, the law firm that, that was hired by the clutch agency goes back to the courthouse saying, Judge, Jacqueline didn't reply. So now let's set up a court date. So you get you'll get another set of papers either by the registered mail or probably another process server, depends on the size of the debt. It says October 3rd of this year, you have to go to court. So let's say October 3rd rolls around, you don't show up. A default in judgment goes against you automatically. But still you still have a chance to fight this, even if it's at that 11th hour. Uh, a default goes against you. A public record may show up on your credit report for $10,000, for example. But the important thing is a judge can't, or the court cannot force you to pay if you don't have the ability to do so. If, if you have two bucks in your account and the well is dry, as you say, the judge can't squeeze water from a dry sponge. Right. Say, so, I mean, they may try to garnish your paychecks or lean on your bank account, um, uh, uh, lean on uh, against your house, something like that. So if you do work for someone, you collect a paycheck. If you don't show up to court, I can probably say by 98%, they're going to come after your paycheck, you know, which averages about 25% of your net check, by the way, for until it's paid off. And guess what? They're going to get paid in full plus fees. So they're going to get paid more than 100%. 
So with early backup, if you do receive uh, an intent to sue uh, legal paperwork, respond. Either a company like myself, uh, an attorney, and, and I want to make sure that all the, the listeners know I'm not a law firm. I'm not a lawyer. Okay, I got the experience of doing this for 30 years, but sometimes it may require a lawyer to push it a little bit further. And, and we'll let the clients know because we do give free consultations during that initial process uh, to start them out. Okay, but remember, they should respond. It's a very, very good idea. But again, we call that law firm. It's being recorded for quality assurance. Don't admit it's your debt, third party stuff. Then I do need to go to court or do I just need to respond to the court paper? So it would be a good idea to hire a company like ours or someone local attorney. If you want to do it yourself, which is fine, uh, yeah, you have to respond. So please call up the law firm saying, what's it about? Talking again in third party. Uh, that, da, 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 da. Like I'll give you just a quick example. Um, like what do we ask clutch agencies? Give me a dollar for dollar breakdown, Mr. Law Firm, of what you say is owed on this account. Not what I owe. Remember, what is owed on this account? Number two, give me a copy of the original signature. I'm sorry, give me a copy of the original application bearing my signature. I need to see some kind of proof, charge card receipts, whatever it's on there. And thirdly, uh, you know, your your client who's a debt buyer, not not the servicing clutch agency, but that owns a debt, they bought it from Bank America. I need to see when they purchased the debt from the original creditor to establish if it's greater than a four-year federal statute of limitations. See, because remember that law firm has all the documentation because they're the legal entity coming after you. So they have to have every every ounce of every information, charge card receipts, application, signatures, uh, this, that, this, that, everything, even including the collection orders that they sent you in that file before they can call you or send you legal papers. Okay. Then there's two questions I have about courts. Would you come with me? Do you have to have an attorney to go to court? And then if I lose the court case, what do you do next? So uh, that, that's the 11th hour stuff, Jacqueline. So in California, being a population, what, 40 million people, it takes a while you know, for things to circulate through the courthouse. It could be small claims, could be superior court. But ultimately, if it comes down to, no, you don't need a lawyer to go to court, especially on a $5,000 debt, you're going to spend probably 3500 with a lawyer. You know, I mean, you might be able to use one of those prepaid legal services that can help you also. Uh, legal Shield, I think, is one of them. I just gave them a free commercial plug here, but they're good. But ultimately, I'm going to kind of go backwards here a little bit, Jacqueline. If it's in the intent to sue process, you receive your first set of legal papers and you respond. If you respond, it doesn't go to court action because you responded within that 30 days or the time allotted in your state. So, if you, And it's also possible to negotiate a settlement with them directly, the law firm. You're not going to get as low as a settlement uh, balance reduction as you would if it's with the collection agency because now the law firm wants to get paid their fees. But you can still get a settlement and clear it. So if you, if you catch it early on. But if you go to court or you know uh, it goes down the line six months later, for example, and you're there, you show up but you lose. And I can tell you a lot of people 89% of the time do lose. Um, you don't need a lawyer, but I mean, if you owe a hundred thousand might be a good idea, but ultimately no, you don't need a lawyer as long as you do a lot of research and good homework before you show up. Okay. And then if you lose a case, what happens? What can you do next? So if it, even if you show up to the court date, uh, and you lose, default goes against you automatically. Um, the judge will say to you, you know, Jacqueline, it, oh, we'll give you how much time do you need to come up with that, that amount? And even while you're there in court, you say, listen, judge, I owe 10 grand, but you know, the best I can do is 5,000 bucks. That's all I got. My, my, my well is dry. I could borrow money from my mom sitting right here next to me. She could write a check today, take it or leave it. Because mo some people, and I don't advise people, I never tell people this, but they can turn on the next day and file for bankruptcy. If they qualify, it's all going to get wiped out and they'll pay back zero. I'm not saying bankruptcy is a good idea. I'll never recommend it. Never rec I have never recommended it. None of my staff will. But sometimes it's no choice depending on their financial situation. So now if a person has no income, they, ha they got laid off a long time ago, live home with mom and dad, well, the court's not going to be they the court can't get their hands on anything. There's no paycheck. There's no bank account. There's no own real estate. It will sit there until it disappears in the next four years. What if the person gets a job, say, in a year or two? Can the company come back and get that money? 
is see the lawsuit is good for four years under under federal court. So meaning that if you get a job three years from now and they find out about it because they'll run your social security number from time to time, hey, she's got a job as an engineer making eighty thousand a year. Um, yes, yeah, they have to send you pre warning letter that hey, we're about to attach your paycheck. This is how much off the net. And but it'll, it'll give you. But at that point, if that happens, you can go back to court, try to delay it or fight it. You know, with the same judge if the judge is still on the bench. Okay, but after four years, they can't do anything about it. Unless they renew it. If they renew it every three and a half years, depending on the size of the debt, it's like making a copy of a copy. But they renew it every every three and a half years. They could. Stay, I've seen one case where it stayed live for fifteen years, eighteen years. That must have been a lot of money that they owe to be worth it, right? Yeah, it's over a hundred thousand. Okay, okay. What's the last minute options when you're dealing with lawsuits? Well, uh, last minute options. Um, of course, one thing again, I never recommend bankruptcy filing. If you got zero income, I mean, you're always welcome to go talk to a an attorney, your know, bankruptcy attorney. Get your free options, Chapter Seven, Chapter Eleven, Chapter uh, uh, Thirteen, whatnot, in your state. Uh, last minute option is, you know, try to come up with some money to try to settle it. You know, on your own. That's eleventh eleventh hour stuff, guys. Um, and ultimately, just you know, understand you know if, if the debt's not yours. If you know it's not yours, then you can actually immediately open up a, um, a what do you call it identity theft or fraud case with the original creditor, and that will you know get the law firm to back off if that's the case. Yeah, but I think most people the debt is theirs. Most likely, it is theirs. They probably forgot about it. I had a guy client yesterday we signed up, and he has a fourteen hundred dollar debt with Capital One. He says. I, this, I don't recognize this one, you know, and digging through his credit report, he says, oh, yeah, it was, it was my ex-wife or, or ex-husband, you know, something like that could happen. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, you know, life happens and you lose your job, you get divorced, yes. you, you know, and then all of a sudden you can't pay for it anymore. You're right. Things happen. It's, you know, it's out of your control, things like that. And, you know, it happens. I mean, you know, we, we, this country, we have eight times more credit card accounts combined in the whole world combined. And then the student loan debt is just over trillions of dollars. Yeah, so yeah, if you're, it's going crazy. you're a student, you know, I know people in their 30s and 40s are still trying to play their student loan off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's outrageous. Yeah, I mean, student loans and uh, credit card debt is mounting good credit card debt on time, let alone collections. Yeah, it, it's, it's getting pretty crazy. So can you give us some case example? You mentioned one client, but... Give us some more so that it's more understandable and tangible for people. Yeah, uh, I'll kind of give you a two, three part uh, case example. These are actual clients. Um, one that, that's real memorable, I remember this one client owed $28,000 of Citibank, and they report on her credit report is $36,000. Um, that was automatically known as an FCRA violation, Fair Credit Reporting Act violation. So when I, this is our process. When we get a client started, Besides signing our contract, we have to get them to sign a uh, uh, signed notarized power of attorney. Uh, that signed notarized power of attorney we send into the, the bad guys, law firms or whatnot, that gives permission from the client for us to communicate with them verbally. On the very first phone call, we're asking for documentation, give us what's about the account to prove any F FCRA, FDCPA violations. So when we got the documentation back, they had a collection letter that they had originally sent to the client that was 28,000. So automatically, when we took a look at their credit report, saying the debt buyer, collection agency representing Citibank, said 36,000 on the credit report, 28,000 on, on the collection letter. And we use that against them. So what happened was, is that the whole debt got completely waived. She didn't pay back a penny. On top of that, it got deleted from her credit report within two to four weeks. And the collection agency, in combination with the creditor, had to pay her a $6,000 financial settlement. So she received money, not the other way around. Now, that happens 20, 30% of the time. Even if we do see an FCRA violation in that example in someone's credit report, um, it could take four to six months to do a lawsuit. Some people will say, Wait, I'm trying to buy a home. I don't have six months. I need to get it now. So what's the best, next best thing? We force them to take like a very super, super low settlement. Or Mr. Creditor, we will take you to court kind of thing. So... Uh, again, I work with a, a law firm partner that does those kind of lawsuits. So, so in that case, if someone doesn't have four to six months to wait, then great. We'll use that against them in the client's favor to settle that debt. So her debt got completely waived. 
Another case, client owed 8,000 to a bank, uh, I don't recall the name of the bank, uh, and it, it was charge off as a loss, and charge off means it's more than six months of missed payments, that's where the word charge off shows up on your credit report or collections. And um, they put down, I think it was something minor, it was, uh, oh, they offered him $6,500 to settle it, like roughly a 15, 20% reduction. Well, if they do that, as a hard number based on the collection letter, they're supposed to update his credit report from 8,000 down to 6,500, and they failed to do that, another FCRA violation. So this particular case, because it went the other way, um, it wasn't strong enough for a potential lawsuit, but, we, but they don't know that. And we threatened them with legal action, and we said, and they ended up selling it for about 950 bucks. Oh, my gosh. So, so that, that's a really good deal. So if a company offers you a settlement, they also have to adjust it on the your credit report? In most cases, not all the time. It just it, It's case by case, Jacqueline, on the situation. And you can determine which case that is. Right. My team and I will explain. Oh, we'll determine that. Uh, I mean, I could talk another twenty minutes about that alone, but 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 yeah, case by case. So uh, ultimately, to see if someone qualifies, they get welcome just to contact me. You'll get my contact info at the end of the podcast, and just email me the latest credit report from annualcreditreport.com. We'll use our eyes to take a look at it. We've been talking a lot about the bigger debts, like over ten thousand, eight thousand. Yes. What if someone has less than twenty five hundred dollar debt? Yeah, good point. So um, in our team, and you're going to find that uh, a lot of debt settlement firms, debt consolidation companies, things like that have a, a certain minimum. So we require a $2,500 minimum debt on any single one debt. Um, so if someone had an $800 debt with Capital One with a collection agency, folks, just give us a call and we'll tell you how to negotiate a settlement for free, do it yourself kind of thing. Um, just because the, the the time that a lot of time that we, we do have people on payroll, for example, but if someone had, you know, five, five hundred dollar medical bill collection accounts with the same collection agency, I had a client one time that had six Capital One accounts, like you know, seven hundred year, twelve hundred there, that add up to be eight thousand dollars, but it was all with the same collection agency. That's okay because we can kill eight birds with one stone. So again, we'll review the credit report to determine that. But if you have a bunch of small ones. Uh, collection accounts or charge off credit card accounts with the same collection agency over 2500 we're good to go okay so so if someone has a little tiny 500 300 folks give me a call i'll, I'll tell you how to do it yourself for free because by the time you pay our fee at the end of the process it's not it's not worth it right right but you'll get hit also with the reduction in credit score though once you start doing this right once you nope. settle no actually it goes up because remember, it's already all in collections. We require the debt to be in collections. If you settle an on-time credit card, yes, your score will dip or close it on your own. But as you say, you're beyond the point of no return. So it's like carrying dead weight. So you settle a $300 collection account or $300,000 collection, $300, collection account, your score will go up. Because you're, you're, as you say, you're, you're getting rid of the dead weight, which will raise your FICO score within 30 to 45 days after it settles. At what point after you stop paying your credit card is a good time to call you? As soon as it hits charged off, the word charged off on your credit report, which is typically uh, seven or more, six or more missed payments, or you haven't paid it in years, medical bill will say collection. So it has to be collection or charged off. Um, even business debt, folks, we can work on, it may not show up on your credit report. So if you own a business and you have large substan substantial business debt, we can also do that. One thing, is we don't do debt consolidations, debt settlement. We usually offer the creditor a one-time reduced amount. When you do debt consolidation, you rarely get a, if never, get a balance reduction, but you can pay it back over many years. This is for people who are trying to buy, do something now, buy a home, buy a business, whatever, or refi their house where they need that done now. Ours usually takes between two to four weeks. Debt consolidation could take two to four years. Wow. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Robert. So. Robert's company is Your Debt Solution, Inc. And remember, he never charges upfront fees. They only get paid if and when they can complete your debt settlement process. His website is yourdebtsolution.org. You can email Robert at info at yourdebtsolution.org. And his phone number is 949-371-8885. 
The information is in the show notes. Thank you so much, Robert, for being here on the show. Thanks, Jacqueline. Appreciate it. Okay, the quote of the week is, a year from now, you wish you had started today. So keep on learning and keep on growing. Thank you, listeners. Thank you so much for joining us today. Go to parentpumpradio.com and click on the pink box on the top of our homepage to listen to our new and archived shows. To be instantly notified of new episodes, subscribe to our RSS feed. The RSS feed button is located at the top of the page where all our shows are featured. And after listening to the show, go to parentpumpradio.com or our Facebook page to leave your comments, questions, and topic suggestions. And while you're at our website, sign up to receive a free gift. Until next time, have a wonderful week.